CNN and other news outlets need to stop reporting the number of test positives for COVID-19 as total cases. These are not total cases of coronavirus, and they're nowhere near close to being total cases. They might not even represent 1% of the total cases, for all anyone knows. On one hand, the mainstream media decries and bemoans the lack of testing, the lack of tests, the lack of test kits. And while this is important, that reporting invalidates their other reporting of total cases. If you're so short on testing, you don't know what the total cases are. Now, this is coming from people like at CNN who should know better. I reached out to CNN days ago on YouTube about this, and they've continued to keep these screens up reporting the total cases statistic, although they did decide to hide their responsibility behind Johns Hopkins to appear to give them some credibility while reporting this fake number. If I was Johns Hopkins, I would be furious at this, and I would correct this false reporting immediately. Now here's what Johns Hopkins actually provides. As you can see, they're accurately describing their statistic as total confirmed. Now if CNN wants to call it the number of test positives or the total confirmed cases, that would be fine. Because, you know, for the casual viewer who just turns into CNN, now they don't know how these numbers are derived. And if all you are going to do is report uh, a statistic like total cases, they're going to see that number and they're not going to know what it means exactly, they're just going to think, oh, well, you know, there's only 50,000 total cases and there's 330 million Americans. Gee, that's nothing. You know, that's like, what am I worried about? I'm going to go out and party. I'm going to, you know, go to the beach. I'm going to go, go to church. Go. So it's so easy to mislead people with fake language like this. And it's just a matter of, you know, mastering the English language and knowing what you're trying to say, being honest enough to say it accurately in a way that doesn't mislead somebody and you know even worse if somebody at CNN caught wind or, or figured out how misleading the this language is and they didn't change it that's even worse so again I'm going to try to compel somebody at CNN who's looking at this to say you can't hide behind Johns Hopkins and change the 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 uh, the wording that you use when you're throwing these statistics out there like that on people you're it's very misleading and it's so misleading, and in this particular case, it's, it's so fake, it's so false, it's so misleading, it can even be dangerous. In another spot of fake news, we apparently have CNN stating that, quote, coronavirus deaths could reach a peak in three weeks, ep epidemiologist says. You know, and again, this is false reporting. Uh, the doctor did not say that. No, the deaths will not peak in three weeks. The deaths will be much higher at the end of this year than they will be in three weeks from now. You know, and again, CNN chooses to confuse their viewers with false wording, uh, like they don't know how, they don't have a command of the English language, instead of clearly stating what they know to be true. They probably meant to say that the rate of increase in deaths would peak in three weeks. So they should say that and speak the English language accurately since the, it's the only language they know. And in another astonishingly stupid development in all this drama is the Coronavirus Task Force, swaying around bumping into each other, standing shoulder to shoulder, um, repeatedly talking about how they have habits of shaking other people's hands. You know, and they're all, they're a bunch of bubbleheads up on stage. It was from the looks of it. And they're, they're doing the exact opposite of social distancing. Uh, and, you know, and they're serving as a terrible example to anyone who would watch this stuff. Now, this is not how you demonstrate leadership for American people watching the news. The best example of leadership is leadership by example, and we need leadership by example here more than ever. If we follow the global trends of this virus on March 25, 2020, it's now looking likely that the United States will be the country in the world with the biggest outbreak of this virus. These foolish Americans who are partying on the beach and having coronavirus parties and acting like they're young and invincible and they have nothing to worry about should be ashamed of themselves. They're young, dumb, and full of cum, and they're going to get people killed. Look, as the president has said, uh, in our line of work, uh, you shake hands when someone wants to shake your hand. And uh, I expect uh, the president will continue to do that. I'll continue to do it. Uh, what, what this is is a broad recommendation for Americans. Um, but a really good recommendation is to wash your hands often. And, and the, all the experts tell me 